Hello, this is Mertimba Graphics, and in this tutorial, we will be creating a Twitch follow overlay that you could use as a powerful call to action for your YouTube videos or for your streams in general. Uh, without further ado, let's jump in After Effects and start creating this step by step. First of all, let's create a new composition. I'm, cre I'm naming it Twitch Overlay 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second, and duration 10 seconds long. So, click OK. We don't need this anymore. Let's turn on the proportion and grid. Uh, this will help us draw a, a good shape. So go to the rectangle tool and select the rounded rectangle tool. Make sure your fill is set to solid color. Of course, purple color. So here's the code. And stroke is set to none. We don't need stroke for this. And just create this shape so it looks like a button. Of course, align it in the center. And rename it to but go to the type tool now select the type tool click on your button and type follow then select the selection tool and drag it to your liking make sure you're holding control so it snaps in place so like this is good now we need our heart in here and in the assets folder you'll find a heart png so drag the heart png to the new composition for a button this will create a new composition out of it. Go back to the Twitch overlay composition and you'll see that the heart PNG composition was created here. Just drag it to the timeline and you see that it's too big. So hit S for scale, scale it down to somewhere around 20 would be nice. And of course, reposition it to your liking, like uh, here will be nice. And hold control so it snaps into place. Then right click the heart composition go to effects generate fill and here change the color to white all right so we at this point we need to parent our layers to the button so select the heart and follow compositions and drag the pick whip to the button then go to the end, start of your composition select your button click s for scale and click the stopwatch change the value to zero, then go to one second, and change the value to 100, then select both keyframes, press F9, go to graph editor, select this keyframe, drag the handle all the way to the left, and for this handle all the way to the right, create this shape, all right, and if we preview this, we'll see that we already have some, some cool animation. So at one second, let's bring in our cursor, so something that will be Hovering and clicking our button. So in Assets folder, you'll find Hand PNG. Drag that to the new composition icon. This will create a new composition as before. Go to the Twitch Overlay composition and drag the Hand composition that was created to the timeline. And of course, it's too big, so hit S for scale. Decrease the size of it to... All right, like 20 would be... All right, yes. So at one second, so hit select your hand composition, press P on your keyboard, click the stopwatch, zoom out a bit and bring this hand outside of the composition, like so. So then move to two seconds and bring this hand to wherever you want it to click. So like here, let's say, select both, oops, select both keyframes, press F9, go to graph editor, and select this keyframe and drag the handle all the way to the left. Then exit the graph editor. And if we preview this right now, you'll see that our hand sort of slides in nicely. All right, let's zoom in. And we need to find an exact frame when our hand starts hovering over our button. So you see this frame here. Let's mark it. Select your hand. Press asterisk for, to place a marker. And so select your heart composition right now and hit S for scale oops so like this like so click the stopwatch create a keyframe and go to two seconds mark and change the scale so the value to 25 let's say and select the keyframes F9 go to graph editor and drag the handle all the way to the left all right if we preview this you'll see that once the heart start hovering over our button this heart will start anim like scaling up so that's a good solid animation we have right there. So at two seconds, uh, uh, we need our fingertips to click. So uh, 
Go to two seconds, then move 10 frames forward, like so. And uh, we need to zoom in nicely right now, like so. Select your hand and go to this icon, puppet pin tool, select it and create points like so. Four points, like that. Then click U to see all the keyframes, find the puppet pin one. And from this point, move five frames forward, so one, two, three, four, five. And drag this point slightly, so it looks like it's clicking. This is all right. So move five frames forward from here, one, two, three, four, five. And select the first keyframe, control C, control V to paste it. And then select these keyframes for puppet pin one only. Press F9, go to graph editor, zoom in a little, a little bit. Select all the keyframes, drag this handle to the left and this handle to the right all the way. All right, so if we preview this right now, you'll see that our hand is like clicking with a finger. Okay, so and this, this point is where our finger is clicking. So mark it with by pressing asterisk, select, selecting your hand, of course, asterisk. This will make it easier for us. And now let's bring this up like so okay and select your selection tool and this is where our, most of our effects will take place so go to effects and presets here and search for drop shadow and bring this drop shadow over the button like so and bring opacity all the way to 100 and distance to 10 and set softness to 60 all right, let me actually show you what we are doing right here. So toggle transparency grid, you'll see that we have a slight shadow over here. And at this point, at this marker, so press uh, stopwatch for distance and softness. Then from here, uh, let's actually select our button here on the timeline, press U, so we see the keyframes. And also we need a keyframe for scale. So here, select the keyframe for scale two. And move two seconds forward, so one, two. And for scale, let's put uh, 85. And for drop shadow, for softness, let's put zero. And for distance, zero as well. So then move three keyframes from here. One, two, three, th three, yeah. Right, I got a bit carried away right there. And copy these original keyframes from here. Control C, Control V, nice. And then, Select all the keyframes like so, press F9, go to graph editor, zoom in nicely, select all of them like so, and drag this handle to the left and this handle to the right. All right, cool. Exit the graph editor. And if we preview this right now, you'll see that this button is being clicked on. So it has a nice effect that it lo actually looks like a real click. And we, Need to add a color as well. So go to your button, click the drop down. We don't need effects, go to content, rectangle one, fill, and go to this original marker keyframe here. Click the stopwatch for color, move two frames forward, and change the color to some nice gray color like so. All right, we don't need graph editor for this one. Okay, so if we preview this like from the beginning, we'll see that there's animates in and it's being clicked on nicely. All right. Okay, so uh, let's move to 220. And from here, let's move 10 frames forward. So move to three seconds exactly. And at two seconds, we need to do something. Um, and that something is we need to select our button and go to, you see the rectangle path. So right click and select and click to convert to Bezier path and select the so then open path one and click the stopwatch from here move 10 frames forward and actually let's zoom in here like so and select these four points whoops let's actually select these four points and drag them to the left. Make sure you're holding shift so you do not misalign your selection. So like so, make it that the heart is in the middle. So like so is good. All right. 
And of course, select the keyframes, press F9 and go to graph editor and drag this handle all the way to the left like that. And oh, we need to remove our text right now. So select our follow text and go to this keyframe to three seconds. Mm, press T on your keyboard for, for opacity. Select a keyframe, go one frame forward, or actually two frames forward and do set the opacity to zero like so. All right. So move to this last keyframe. So three seconds, 10 frames. And what we need to do here is we select our button and click Control D to duplicate and straight away just rename it to bell button. And keep it selected and go to this icon here, pan behind tool, so Control double click it like so. And then go to select the selection tool and drag this to the right. So make sure you're holding control while doing so. Drag it to somewhere around here. All right. And at this point, we need an actual bell in here. So go back to the project assets folder. You'll see a bell icon. Drag it to the new composition icon. OK, go back to Twitch overlay. And we need our bell icon composition to, on our timeline. So drag it above bell button. OK, hit S for scale, bring the scale down to I don't know, 60 looks good. So then position it to make sure you're holding control and align it in the center. It'll just snap in while you're holding control. All right, then right click on your bell, go to effects, generate uh, fill and here change the color to white. All right, so far so good. And this point, uh, parent the bell icon to the bell button, like so. All right. OK, so where are we right now? Let's have a look. We have a lot going on. OK, so at this three minute, uh, three seconds, 10 frames, this finishes animate. All right, so let's select bell button, click U, and click the stopwatch for path. This will remove all the keyframes because we don't need them. And uh, here we need to select our bell button and bell icon press T on the keyboard and click the stopwatch icons for for both so create keyframes for opacity then select bell button alone press P for position and select the, the stopwatch then from here move five frames back so one two three four five and move the bell button slightly to the right to the right like so just a tiny bit and uh, well decrease the opacity to zero for bell icon and bring the opacity by hitting T on bell button and bring the opacity down to zero as well then select both these keyframes hit F9 uh, go to graph editor and just zoom in a bit select this keyframe and drag the handle all the way to the left exit the graph editor and if we preview this, we'll, we'll see that our text is disappearing. And then you see that the bell button is appearing out of nowhere, sort of pushing our main button to the left. OK, so far, so good. So this is three seconds, 10 frames is where everything finishes animating. So move to 10 frames forward from here. And we need our hand now, so select your hand. And we have a keyframe for position here for hand. So click, create a keyframe for position. Move 10 frames from here. And move our hand on top of the bell icon here. All right, cool. Then from here, move 10 frames forward. And we need our clicking animation back. So uh, go to the puppet pin one. So select these three keyframes. Control C, Control V to paste them in here. All right. So we created that clicking effect. So we we have we've created it before. We just you know sort of duplicate it, you know. Okay. So we need effects for the bell button too. Okay. So first let's mark this keyframe because this is where we click on the bell icon. So select your hand and click asterisk to place a marker. Then select the bell button and click U. And you see these keyframes here. Select all of them and drag them and align them to this 
uh, fra keyframe. So this marker right here. So boom, we've successfully duplicated that clicking effect that we we had before. All right, so that's good. And let's go one step further and add some animation to the bell itself. So at this exact frame again, select the bell icon, click R for rotation, and click the stopwatch. And from here, move three frames forward. So one, two, three. Change the value here to 20. Move another three keyframes forward and change the value to minus 20. Then from this point, move five frames forward. So one, two, three, four, five. Change the value to 10. Then another five frames forward. One, two, three, four, five. Change this to minus 10. And from here, 10 frames forward and change the value to zero. So then select all the keyframes, just press F9. We don't need graph editor for this one. And if we zoom out and preview this, you'll see that, you know, we have a nice click and our bell is like rotating and, you know, looks good. Okay, so right about here at, say five seconds, or oh, five seconds, oh, let's get to just five seconds. And uh, we need to move our hand away slowly. So select your hand, find, set the keyframe for position, like so. Move one second forward and just zoom out and drag this hand outside of your composition. All right. Then select, select the hand, press P twice actually, and select these keyframes. Right, so let me just preview this. Okay, select these keyframes. F, uh, go to graph editor. And we need these ones, select these four, press F9. And then we need this point, this specific point. So drag this handle to the right all the way. All right. Okay, so what do we have now? So at six seconds, our hand is out of the composition. Since it's out, uh, let's select our hand and press T on, your, on the keyboard. Create a keyframe for opacity and move one frame forward and change the value to zero. This will be handy for some future animations. All right, so at six seconds, uh, let's create keyframes for bell button and for button. So select bell button and, bell and button. Uh, click uh, P on the keyboard. Well, twice actually, and create keyframes for bell button and click the stopwatch for button. And from here, we need to uh, go to one second forward and select bell button first. And in well, where is it? Align, so uh, select align horizontally, then select button and also align horizontally. And you'll see that we are getting this overlap. And well, depending on which shape you want to appear on top, uh, for my, in my case, I want the heart to be on top. So uh, I'll actually bring the button on top of the bell, so like so. And of course, select the keyframes, press F9, go to graph editor, and uh, just I just drag these handles in the middle like so. And we also have these keyframes for position, I've just realized. So drag, uh, select them too, click F9, go to Graph Editor. And we, here we need to select this keyframe and drag it to the left. All right. So far, let's just preview this from beginning. Let's see what we are having here. All right, just a click and then slide, another click and boom. Nice. And okay, so this is like they're sort of getting stacked on top of each other so go to seven seconds and here we need to create like a zoom out animation and right click on the empty space go to new null object and create and rename this to controller that's what i like to do you don't have to and we need to pair in every layer that's not already parented to something else to this controller so hand hand is not button and bell button so parent these to the controller then select controller press s and click the stopwatch move one second forward and change the value to zero 
select these two keyframes, F9, go to Graph Editor, and drag these handles in the middle like so. All right, and let's show we preview this once again. All right, let's see what we have so far. All right. Nice. All right, so that looks good. We can make it look even better by adding some motion blur. So click U to remove everything from here to just hide the key hide the keyframes. And let's turn on motion blur for heart, for button, and for well bell button. Why not? And for the bell as well. Why not? All right, let's preview this once again. And. Well, it's a bit subtle, you don't even notice it that much, but it just it makes it look a bit better. You see that it's a bit like blurred, that's what motion blur does. So, anyway, this is it. And of course, you can adjust everything to your liking, you know, change the color, size, animation, you know, duration, and everything, pretty much everything's under your control. This is just a tutorial of this specific, like, sort of, let's call it template. So... Yeah, if you enjoyed, uh, let me know by liking this button, uh, by, by <laughs> clicking the like button, or tell me, uh, let me know in comments down below. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.